Jesus, Microsoft. Windows Store PC games. This is gonna suck. Is it? Uh, is it ran thirty by chance? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's gonna be good. Let's talk about the shenanigans going on with the new Microsoft Store PC gaming stuff. We're gonna give you guys a history. All right, so in the beginning, there was DOS. And with DOS, developers had direct access to the hardware. They could just, they whatever they wrote, they wrote direct access to the hardware, graphics cards, which were minuscule things back in the day, uh, and your audio car drivers and all that kind of jazz. And it was all, uh, your developers for the games had direct access to that. When Windows 95, when Windows 3.1.1 came out, or Windows, th Windows 3, Windows 1, 2, 3, when all that came out, uh, you still were running basically on top of DOS, and it was the same same effect. When Windows 95 came out, they changed the way the kernel worked by making you know the new kernel that they came up with for the mm -hmm. Windows 95, and there was still this weird limbo state where you had games that were being written uh, for Windows, but you'd still drop into DOS to play the games. Most of them were like that, and as they progressed forward into like Windows 98, you ended up with uh, DirectX, and DirectX was the abstraction layer between. Uh, the the high level application of the the programs in the Windows environment and the hardware because the new kernel restricted access to the lower level hardware so they had to create this uh, the API that is now known as DirectX and it's just kind of evolved over the years now back then one of the interesting things that Microsoft was doing is they were trying to sell their operating system and they needed everyone to buy it they wanted everyone to adopt it and they discovered something they were like whoa People are really into these games so they did everything they could to help out all the different developers to work on their bugs. Um, they they really did a lot to help the early stages of PC gaming become a thing. I mean, they, yeah, they, they, the, the creation of DirectX was directly related to helping uh, all, the these, bugs on these, well, you know, all, all of these devs uh, to to be able to access the hardware and allow them to make the games. 99 is when, uh, you know, PlayStation has been out. Uh, there's been an announcements for PlayStation 2 is going to be, it's on the horizon, we're going to totally do this thing. Uh, Nintendo 64 had been out for a little while, and they were talking about possibly making something else. And then Microsoft just kind of dropped this this bomb in the, on, on the entire community and be like, hey, we're going to make this Xbox. And it's it's gonna it's gonna be really really awesome. And then the proprietary version of DirectX and the proprietary Windows kernel and all that kind of jazz that goes into the Xbox. And the original name was supposed to be the Direct Xbox, but that's a mouthful and kind of stupid to say. Let's let's be less direct about it and just make it the Xbox. And yeah. and it was essentially a PC under the hood, and it overheated. All right, so we had a 300 megahertz proprietary Pentium that was in that thing, and then for the graphics processor, it was a, it was a Celeron Pentium 3. That was what was mm -hmm. really funny about it. Uh, anyway, so they made a proprietary GeForce 3 for the Xbox, and that was great. So now we've got a DirectX 8 version of, uh, of, of a GeForce 3 running on uh, a Pentium, 300 megahertz Pentium processor with some, some, throw some RAM at it. And we referenced consoles like the PlayStation, PlayStation 2. They had a proprietary and a very different uh, instruction set like the for the cell CPU. processor, a totally different API. Yes. Much different as far as the development process goes. With the Xbox, it was an x86 instruction set with you know, the same kind of graphics processors you'd find in the in a Windows machine, uh, you know, running here at 2001. When did XP come out? About the same time. Uh, but in the process of doing so, they tried to push all of this gaming functionality of Windows into the Xbox. Part of it was a marketing ploy to get everybody away from Sony and from Nintendo, and it's like, hey, we could totally do this and make some money. But at the same time, they were slowly hamstringing themselves as a Windows uh, Windows platform being used for, for playing games. Uh, they bought Bungie long before the Xbox came out. Uh, the or Halo was originally designed to come out on Windows and Mac. It was actually going to be a third-person game, and they were going to put it on put it on a Mac. Yeah, it was actually unveil, un unveiled at a um, Macintosh event. Yeah. There's like, hey, and then, of course, it's now exclusive to Microsoft and exclusive to the Xbox platform. Other than when they bring it out for Windows, games for Windows or whatever, multiple years later. But yeah, it's pretty much an Xbox exclusive. What the thing is, is that when you make a console, and they knew this, when you make a, a box, like, hey, we've got a really expensive box that's going to have fewer features than a PC, not you know, and, and use these controllers, and it's going to go in your living room. Mm -hmm. How are you going to sell that? Like, what is going to be the, the, the appeal to having that? So they needed some exclusive titles, because the only reason anybody buys a console 
is for the exclusive titles. Now we say that, but we know a lot of people are going to be like, well, I like sitting in my living room and playing a game. Well, back then... Well, why did you buy a PlayStation versus an Xbox? Because you wanted those exclusive titles. That's the only reason you buy a certain platform. Sure. They bought Rare. Uh, in they, you know, Nintendo and Rare had a partnership for a long time, and then Microsoft came along and they, they bought the company in 2002. And uh, Banjo Kazooie is now only like available on, on Xbox. And oh, again, more exclusives for their more exclusives, and, and this was done as an exclusivity for uh, you know, your Xbox platform. But all the while this is happening, you know, I saw a trend with games that were being created for PC and Xbox. Microsoft was going to them and giving them incentives. Basically, they were paying them to release the plat release for the Xbox platform first for a couple of weeks, a Maybe month, a year or two. If it's running on DirectX 8, the code base for the Xbox and for your Windows machine are virtually identical. I mean, the the only thing that's really different, you know, allowing for better graphic settings. So you add in the adjustable graphic settings, maybe some higher texture packs, and uh, the control scheme. So here's the interesting thing about that. The, the reason that they do this sort of thing is for segmentation and to create sort of a little walled garden. It's, it's a really largely to control the customer base uh, and, and make sure that they can siphon money off of them with, it, with, with things like Xbox uh, you know, Gold subscriptions and the monthly subscription for the internet. You're already paying for your internet, but you're going to pay an extra subscription fee for other things. So they can just keep their hand inside your pocket in ways that they couldn't. A lot of the developers started developing games specifically with the Xbox in mind. So Microsoft's business practice here, what it really does is screws the PC gaming community. And in the sense that we don't have access to these games that, that are completely compatible with, with the PC, and then a lot of the games that do come over have a bad case of consoleitis. And that term came about because of this entire process. We, you know, you look at look at Deus Ex, which is the first one in the series, yeah. and the, the, oh, the interface. Second one. Oh my god! Yeah, exactly. That's where I'm going. You look oh, at the god, the original a, one. What a fuck! And watch this. Uh, you watch him. You see, it was it was the first one was designed around a keyboard and mouse, and the 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 experience was designed around that. Being able you to use your entire keyboard, all your function keys, so many different uh, keys you needed for different things. You could type in the game, you could use your number pad for different things. You used your entire keyboard. Part 2 comes out, the entire interface is just ridiculous. Uh, it's designed for a controller. In fact, I know that some people actually just said screw it and went and got a controller and played it with like that on their PC because that was easier. That was years ago and that's what they did to the community. And, you know, I guess a few years after that, in um, well, 2002, they, they established Microsoft Game Studios, and that was in charge of releasing and publishing all the different games for all the platforms. Um, and it also acquired a bunch of different companies. Right now, they they own everything from uh, Lionhead to um, uh, Mojang, which yep. makes Minecraft. So and all that's... That they, have, they own Rare. Rare, you can see over here, uh, all the different companies they own. Some of these are indie studios or studios that incubate indie products. But which, which is great. I mean, it's a great idea, but the fact that they're they're incubating these indie studios to develop for the Xbox, to develop for the Xbox, it's like even even Mark of the Ninja, which was a fantastic game, mm -hmm. was originally released on Xbox because of that, and so, that was a deal that they made with Microsoft. And from a developer perspective, I totally understand, and I don't like to sit here and say, oh, throw these guys under the bus. They wanted to make the game, and they wanted to get it out, and they wanted to get it released. And they, well, they also got some money, so and they needed the money for developing the game. And and that was they they were given the budget, but one of the deals they had to sign was that they had to release it on Xbox first. Microsoft can show up with a million dollars in a truck out front and say this is for the development of Zweihander. It has to be exclusive to Xbox for six months, and I'll tell them to go fuck themselves. Just so you guys know. And Microsoft don't even try it. Actually, you know what? No, try it. Try I want to get all of that on tape, and I want to tell them to piss off I all do. right i want to film that that would be great that would be pretty funny so all this stuff happened and then they're like maybe we need to consider the pc gaming audience again they're getting a little angry with us we're i mean they're, they're using our platform but they're getting a little angry and there's also a lot of gaming happening over there and we don't have a big piece of the pie anymore because we're playing with microsoft xbox why don't we create another walled garden specifically for the pc and then start paying developers to use our walled garden on the pc and they called it Games for Windows Live. And, you know, it's similar to something like Steam or Uplay or one of the other services out there where you can go and buy your games and use it as a tool to launch your games. 
but it's different. They decided to lock it down. You know, if you guys are curious about all the different problems with Games for Windows Live, I think Hitler says it best here. I, I mean, there's, yeah, voice chat, there's no push to speak key. What the hell? That was not there. The EXE files were locked down. You had no access to them. It encrypted, encrypted your save files. You yep. couldn't do anything, any kind of mods or all that kind of stuff. Now, this this was in 2008 that this happened. That, that's that's it's still the, recently compared to the release of the original Xbox. It took well, them that sure. many years before they were like, oh, the PC, there's people still play games there. We, we didn't anticipate that. I think they thought that people were just going to stop playing on the PC and start playing on the Xbox and start using their PCs as tax blast. That really is what I think they were trying to do. And it annoyed all of us who were sitting here going... But why would I want to buy this thing from three years ago, four years ago, five years ago? Oh, look, they came out with a new one. It's still got two years outdated hardware, and let's move forward. It's, it, gets, it gets ridiculous, and it's, it, it is annoying. They learned their lesson. You know, the next time they come back and do this, maybe they'll be ready to finally support PC as a platform, right? And it almost looks like they've been trying to make it look like they were doing that. With You look at DirectX 10, you look at DirectX 11, DirectX 12, and we're like, yes, finally, we're getting somewhere, somewhere, and we can actually not hate you as much as we have over the last 25 years. And then you gotta go and ruin the ride. Guess who saw this coming? Gabe Newell. About a year or so ago, Gabe Newell looked at what was happening with Windows 8. And the Windows Store, which mostly had a bunch of cheesy apps that were similar to like an Android app, and really, in, really just casual games and basic applications that ran in sort of a different environment, not the typical Windows style environment. He looked yeah. at that and he was like, I don't, I don't like what Microsoft's doing here. Maybe we really need to look into making our own platform. So that sort of pushed him into saying like, yeah, we don't have enough control over this and it, it's dangerous. So maybe we should create our own version of Linux and make the Steam OS based on Debian. And he did that. And then now you can get Steam on any Debian-based uh, distro pretty easily, and also some of the other distros, it's, it's not that difficult to install. And he started shifting his focus there. A lot of the media immediately came out and were like, oh, tinfoil hat, Gabe Newell is afraid of Microsoft. Microsoft is the PC gaming platform. What is wrong with Gabe Newell? So I think the issue that Gabe Newell had with this whole Microsoft Windows Store was that it isolates the game itself, where it isolates the application into their little encrypted walled garden, which is like the way that Apple loads all of their apps, except there's like this box around it. Uh, you know, when you look at an app in, in, a, in an Apple machine or in a Mac, it's a folder, it's got all this cool stuff inside of it, and you can actually open it up and dig into it and find the actual binary and find the, you know, effectively is the exe file. and run that directly or you can modify it and tweak it around and that's kind of cool in its own little side 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 concept topic we can talk about later but if microsoft creates this and it's doing this it creates this unified windows platform and all of these uh applications and games and not just games but a lot of applications are suddenly inside this little box you don't have access to that exe file because they're encrypting it they're they're locking it down this is bad, but it, it wouldn't be that bad if they weren't nerfing the experience and just sort of bringing... It's it's like, Microsoft, we understand you guys want to come back onto PC, but don't get your console all over our PC. That's what you're doing. You're just rubbing the console all over the PC. And that's not the way you should deal with PC gamers. We've got keyboard and mouse. We can do we can do a lot more. Uh, the other thing that this is going to be very, very bad for is the mod community. Imagine trying to modify games that are on this platform. It's either not going to happen, or you're going to have to go through Microsoft and have their specific approval on everything you do. It's going to turn into DLC or paid mods. Yeah, paid mods. We can see them salivating over this already, so they're going to be able to have their hand in your pocket. Next up, I'm going to make a, a, a bit of a prediction here, because they're already talking about the next generation of their console. It's going to turn into an There's amorphous no more... blob that will constantly evolve as time goes on, kind of like your PC. Hmm. Weird how that is. One of the things about the Xbox or any console is that you have the software that you write for the hardware. And with when you look at the Sony PlayStation, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, Nintendo 64, Nintendo, all these things had very different CPUs. Each CPU had its own instruction set, and it was very, very different from one to the next to the next. To the There's next. a lot of segmentation among the hardware, which makes it more difficult to develop for, but not that much more. Not this day and age. No. But what it did, though, is when you look at the PlayStation 1 and the PlayStation 2, the PlayStation 1 and the PlayStation 2 are not software compatible. And people are like, but wait a minute, Kane, the, the PlayStation 2 could totally play all your PlayStation games. Yes. So the IO controller for the PlayStation 2 was an entire PlayStation 1, minus the audio and the video. It was all 
that part was all done by the by by the backside of of the PlayStation 2. So when you move into the PlayStation 3, one version of it had a PlayStation 2 slash PlayStation 1 built into it, so you could play all those things. Actually, no, I take it back. I don't think you could play PlayStation 1 games anymore. It was just the Emotion Engine was built into the PlayStation 3. Mm -hmm. That all gets crazy. So the backwards compatibility on those makes sense of it not working because the hardware right. is very, very different. But when you look at an Xbox versus an Xbox 360, you're still looking at an x86 instruction set. You're still looking at uh, you know some kind of GPU graphics card. Whether it be AMD or NVIDIA is really irrelevant because they we've, we've proven that they can all work kind of the same. But then you look at it's DirectX 8 versus DirectX 9 or 10 versus DirectX 12 or 11 on the Xbox One. You know, all it of these all things, and it all worked, but looking backwards, none of these new platforms could play the old ones. And the only reason I can see is Microsoft made a design decision on a software level. You get the new hardware, you could have just as easily put the old version of the software on there, or a new version of the software, but use the, the old, old version of DirectX yeah. to run these old games. You, you could have totally done, done that. that. Yeah, do that. yeah. I mean, totally can, done that. You do that just like you do on your PC. You have all the different libraries, and you can play everything on the PC. But now they're talking about this new Xbox... Xbox platform where, you know, there's the universal Windows platform is what they're calling it. But essentially, um, as you move forward, next year, next year, next year, games are going to get better. They're going to become more demanding, just like they do on all the other platforms. And they want to be able to ex upgrade the Xbox One with new hardware. So that's it's essentially kind of, it's almost like a Steam box, but a very light version of it, you know, like a less nerdy version. Yeah, whatever. Nintendo 64 had two major expansions. One was called the Disk Drive, which failed miserably in Japan and never made it to America. And the other one they had was just a RAM upgrade. Yeah, and, and it was, was just so they for could certain games like Perfect Dark because they they used higher textures and they were able to push more. But there was nothing. No, none of the hardware needed to be improved. They just needed more memory to run this stuff. So you had the memory expansion, and bam! Suddenly you can have. Uh, perfect dark running. Yeah, it's great. So they're talking about this universal Windows platform. I'm going to make a few predictions here, filling in some blanks. They've said a lot of these things, but they're also they're sort of trying to unify all this. And I think in the future they're going to try to unify this with the Windows um, Store. So imagine a world where you have um, the universal Windows platform. It works on your Xbox. It works on Windows. Everywhere you go, you have your games library. And it's all locked down and has a bad case of consolitis, and it's inside Microsoft's walled garden. Also, as we move forward in the future, if you have an Xbox One game now, it's going to work on your Xbox One version 7, you know, in a few years when you upgrade your Xbox. It's all the backward, the backward compatibility thing is going to be there now because they want it to be there now. Which I'm actually really impressed with, but it's something they should have done 20 years ago. Well, sorry, 16 years ago when they came out with the Xbox. I mean, this is not anything... That is, it's not like this is revolutionary. I mean, it is, but at the same time, they're trying to make this distinction that the Xbox is not a PC. So, I mean, to really sum up the way I'm feeling about this is I don't trust Microsoft as far as I could sling a grand piano. No. Microsoft has done some really heinously anti-consumer uh, things, especially when you look at what they've done to the PC gaming community. And now that they're getting back involved, I'm really worried about them pulling more developers over to make games exclusively for their stupid platform and we go ahead and mention, mention one right now, and that is uh, Quantum Break, a game made by Remedy, which makes some pretty interesting games like Alan Wake, which I thought was going to be a really cool PC game until they partnered with Microsoft, and now Microsoft. I'm not sure why they don't just buy the damn company, but... Um, I'm kind they, of glad they haven't yet, but it's, it's probably... still, yeah. yeah. And, but yeah, you know, Quantum Break was something that was supposed to be coming out for Xbox. Mm -hmm. And then Microsoft was like, hey, with this new UWP thing, we can totally put this on Windows 10. And one of the other things that's different from the... Uh, from like Steam, is if you get a UWP game mm -hmm. and you buy it in the Windows Store, it only works on Windows 10. So you have to have, you have Windows, to have Windows 10. 10. So it's a, and you it's have to part. have DirectX 12 because I think the platform is, again, I think the platform is like another layer of ab abstraction. So you got DirectX 12 sits here, UWP sits on top of that, and all the games sit in here. So it can do all the translations from the old stuff to the new stuff. It's a really great idea, sort of. Well, the other game that's interesting is coming out is Gears, uh, Gears of War Ultimate Edition. And Gears of War is not a DirectX 12 game, but it's going to be locked to DirectX 12 so that it forces you to use Windows 10 and also... Well, I think uh, that's what I mean, is that the, the UWP, Store, yeah. it, yeah. it, it's, it's doing something that translates the game and what the game actually needs to have to have this. But if you have to have DirectX 12, that also means you have to have DirectX 12 hardware. So if you're running an old graphics card, sorry guys, you could play it previously, but boo-hoo, not anymore, ha-ha-ha. We're micro sloth. We're gonna have a micro sloth. 
Micro trash. What was the other one? Uh, the micro shaft. Yeah. So it looks like we're all going to get micro shaft here um, if we stay with Windows as our primary gaming platform. There's a light at the end of this tunnel, and it's kind of cool. I'm actually, in a way, glad that Microsoft is doing this. I, I think that Microsoft, you know what? We're, I'm pissed off at you guys for, for you know neglecting the PC gaming market and then doing some heinously evil things toward PC gamers. Yeah. But at the same time, you are encouraging people like Gabe Newell, who has a lot of freaking power in the gaming world, probably more power than you guys do, especially on the PC gaming platform, to move things to a new platform, a non-Microsoft platform, a greener field. And I'm talking about Linux. And uh, if this continues, we're going to see more developers support Linux. Vulkan version 1 is out, and that's a new API that is not DirectX. It uh, could possibly be as powerful as DirectX. Right now, the benchmarks aren't quite as good, but this is a very early version and only a couple of things uh, fully supported, one being the Talos principle. But there are a lot of games that may be supporting Vulkan. Our game will support Vulkan. Uh, it's Vihander. That's going to be Vulkan. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be, make it multi-platform so it'll work on everything uh, with Vulkan. Yep. The other thing that's very interesting. So, Star Citizen is using the CryEngine. Yep. Like Crytek. And, and um, the CryEngine does not support Linux. It's it's a DirectX 12 thing. However, a, Chris Roberts has been looking at, this, looking at this and saying, you know, it'd be kind of cool if we could get our game to work on Linux. It'd be it's, nice. Yeah, it's been something that they've said. He's like, if we can make it happen, it'll happen. But predominantly, we're using the CryEngine. It works like this. He has some CryEngine, uh, former CryEngine devs on staff in, in, in Europe. And I know they're all just going, let's cook this thing together. Let's mm -hmm. stick it together, put some sugar on top, a little bit of salt, and bam, CryEngine with Vulcan, which they're working on. Would be great, because if they can find a way to get that process and then hand it back to Crytek, and then Crytek can, would, if they will, incorporate those changes back into the CryEngine itself, CryEngine could then support Vulcan and DirectX 12 out the gate which I think would be great in the long run for everybody. So I'm going to encourage you guys out there to read up on Vulkan, look into Vulkan, try to support developers who are into Vulkan, voice your opinion, uh, you know, that we don't want these games on, on, on exclusively on uh, DirectX 12. It's, it's The thing about Vulkan is it works on Windows. If you're someone who's like, you know what, Linux is a bit too much for me, and, you know, it's, it's enough to get me off my damn couch to just sit on my computer, that's like scary enough as it is. I understand there's some people out there who do not want to be on their computer all day trying to figure out what's going on with the with the terminal and all that on Linux. I understand that. Some of you guys, Linux is not for everyone, but Vulkan will work on your Windows machine. Vulkan will work on your Mac. So even if you're someone who's not an uber nerd who wants to use Linux or someone who just doesn't, it's really easy. I don't know why I'm giving you guys a pass, but some people are scared of it and that's fine. You can be scared of it if you're... For now. For now. For now. Um, <laughs> Vulcan will work on whatever platform you like. So, yeah. That's uh, very promising for the future. So thanks, Microsoft, for, uh, you know, ruining things for yourself and making some terrible decisions. The only thing that worries me leaving this uh, conversation is just the exclusive games that Microsoft is going to try to keep on their own platform. and keep Carrot, it. stick. Yep. Come to the dark side. And I really, I'm mostly worried about the indie developers because there's a lot of really cool indie games. So they, they'll get one or two big AAA titles, and I can deal without all the big AAA titles. We have plenty of them on, on you know, like people, when someone says Halo and all that stuff, I'm like, yeah. Have you ever heard of Half Life? It came out before Halo and blew it out of the water. Yeah. You ever heard of Deus Ex? It was uh, the console version was stupid. It was awful. But the PC version, the best game ever made. So there's a lot of games on. PC that you can e easily rebuttal and come right back with it. Just, hey, you know, we've got more exclusives than anyone has by a factor of about 10. You can look it up. And the uh, game's cheaper. So, uh, even if you're a console gamer, you guys should be uh, interested in this information. Uh, would you guys like a t-shirt? This is Micro Sucks Box with like Micro and then SU Big Fat X Box because I would totally make that. Sucks Box? Sucks Box? Sucks Box. Something like that. Give us some ideas. Maybe we'll make some. All right, everybody, get on that shirt of the month. It's uh, ridiculous and all over the place. We have all kinds of colors, including some very garish tie-dye shirts. I think I think they're just ridiculous enough that uh, they're okay. But uh, as you can see here, we've added a ton of different color options to the store. All kinds of things. So get over there and uh, check those out at EpicPants.com. Thanks to our Patreon members. You guys are uh, 
helping us stay alive while we're in this long moving process. Much obliged. Yeah, and uh, all the tech support members, of course, as well. And if you guys care about the development of the Zweihander video game, the best way that you guys can support right now is to head over to Bandcamp or to Epic Pants and grab a, a copy of the latest album, or you can grab the entire discography. Kept the price nice and low. That's a, You get a lot of music for that money. You know. Four easy installments of only a couple dollars. Yeah. So I, but, All the money that's generated from the sales of the music goes to the development of the video game. So head over there and check that out as well. Thanks very much, guys, and we'll see you in the comments on the website.